All right, I get to decorate a 1932 Woody. She's a beauty. Do some lettering on the two doors and the back. Back's gonna get a little cartoon. Not often you get to have a lift. So this is a special treat. Total comfort. Look at that. Pretty simple. Owner says it runs great. Doing some work on it. And I got my patterns ready. Make it easy. Just to get me on the right track. All right, so let's jump in. My weapon of choice is going to be a Kafka quill number eight. So my goal is to finish the snot out of this one shot um, ivory with reducer and flattening paste and clear. I'm just gonna make it really super thin and really super transparent. So that's my goal. So I'm actually gonna start out with all of these um, clears and flattening paste and reducers and just add the, and just add the uh, one shot afterwards. Pace is thick. It's a little bit of reducer. And then start getting this in there. Just a little bit. Okay, cup, mall stick, brush ready to go. I actually ended up, sorry, that's the heater inside this garage knocking. Um, I actually ended up putting just a couple more drops, a couple more drops of ivory in there just because it was a little weak. So I think we got it to the where we want it to be now. Super thin and rustic. I just ignore trim, ridges, lines, things like that. Just completely ignore them like as if they aren't there. Just take the whole door panel as, as one big panel. Some people don't like that. You want it to all fit inside of a square. That's fine. I just think it's visually you just you won't miss it I mean is your your eyes will just run the letter will just run right through okay what mall stick for pinstriping yeah now we got this little wave element pinstripe element that I'm gonna add between the two Santa Cruz and vintage using my number three, Steve Kafka, pinstriping. Oh. Brush that is just the workhorse. Um, so I'll show you why I'm gonna need this, because I need to pull away from the trim, not go up to it. I need to pull away from it and then end. Let's see, am I in your way? Uh, I, think so. I think we're okay and get to this point like this. Come around, start pushing down, pushing down, get real fat. I 
like that. Okay. And then I've got another, I've got another little, little guy that goes right here. This thing enables me to get, have something to work off of. Actually, the uh, brace on the lift is in my way for this side. It's making it a little difficult. Well, we'll get it. Just needs to have a look. Yeah, this brace is in my way. It's kind of right up against my back. Okay, now we got it. Now we're free from that. I could touch that up just a hair. Straighten that out. Just straighten that out a little bit. Like that. I'm just, I'm not going to try to get super fill in here. You know, try to make that all perfect because there's just too many bumps. Oh, uh, where are we? There we go. Oh, that's much easier. Now I get to work the brush. Thank you so much, Steve, for sharing your brushes with us. These are so awesome. This one just sweeps around. Comes around and gets that teardrop right there. Like that. Oh, this brush is, oh my gosh. Just so sweet. But this, this gives me a, a, I just glide right across this thing. I just, it's like sliding on top of a car with, this, with your hand. So it just, that's what I love about having a, a flat mall stick like this. Just enables you to do such clean work, easy work. Makes your life easy. Makes your life easy. See, every time I have, every time I'm coming off here, I have to come off from the inside of the trim. Tuck it in, pull up on my brush, and whip. So, that's what makes it this. It's a bit, this is a long one right here. And we're still good. This is a long one right here. So I'm gonna go here, raise my mall stick a little, and just bring it right on over. So it's kind of a wave right there. Client wanted a black drop shadow. Um, so this is the same exact recipe as the ivory, only using black one shot and less, I would say about half as much black as I use ivory for a uh, um, good transparency. And it's gonna be just a dirty, quick away shadow, no frills. Number two, Kafka quill. This, uh, this goes pretty quick, this super transparent black. I hope I don't miss any. I already, I already have one truck that I posted where I missed a section of the E and somebody caught it and mentioned it and I go, oh. You know, I think it was, uh, I think it was the, I can't remember, maybe it was the middle, the middle crossbar of the E. I go, oh, that just bugs me. <laughs> All right, for the shadow on the scroll work, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the same number three Kafka. Pinstriping scroller and and again, the mall stick really gives you a lot of stability. And the, uh, as well as the cotton glove to slide effortlessly like butter. I love illustrating, it's fun, especially outline brush 
uh, drawings. It's something that I've always done. And uh, this is a Kafka, I call it a detail brush, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll ID the brush, actual brush uh, name. And um, this is a number four, a go-to brush, super, uh, I mean, you could, you could use this as a, as a uh, pinstripe brush in some respects. Just a really nice, I love these brushes. Got a whole set of them. Uh, this has had a chance about an hour to tack up. I'm not really concerned with um, the paint being, the paint being too tacky. Uh, that's what it looked like if we put a clear coat on it. Looks like I got a little business here that I need to deal with. So see, I mean, it's pretty, pretty solid on there. Just want to clean off his truck so it's not all dusty. And then uh, we'll hit it with a, we'll hit it with a little bit of a scotch pad. So this is two days later after the painting paints dry. Uh, it was way too um, rainy and too much moisture in the air to uh, distress it. Uh, the day I painted it. So um, I'm back and ready to put a scotch pad on this and start distressing. And the awesome thing about this texture is it's so rough um, and it has so many layers of varnish on it that it makes distressing just all that much better. I'm really digging in on this thing too. So it's using my thumb and putting a, I have to put a lot of pressure on obviously because the one shot and all the other um, clear, everything else that's in the paint is all dry. Not cure obviously, because it takes weeks to cure, but only a few hours to dry, actually overnight to dry if it's, super damp conditions, but I really like the way this is coming out as far as the distress look. I want it to be super antique and just bust it up. All right, I feel like I've come to a comfortable stopping point with distressing. Um, let me know what you think. There it is. Thank you so much for watching.